Blog Talk Radio. Stop that, Aki. Welcome to the war room. We got Dez, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you want to end up one or two hours show and keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level. Roll with the topic, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the fat five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine, sports veterans and greats. The 4 for 26, so the war in Kuwait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, diversified and educated. <laughs> Yo. Y'all keep trying, y'all keep switching things up, and y'all still can't see our theme music. What's good, War Room family? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts. I'm your boy, Dev McMillan. I'm at the round table with my brother, B. Austin. Uh, Jimmy the Blueprint will be with us in just a few. A.B., hey, man, it is a very, very peculiar workout occurring down you know, near 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 where you are, down in Atlanta this Saturday. Um, we're going to try to make sense of some of the murky details as well as a bunch of other topics from the past week in sports. So make sure y'all keep it locked right here for the next two hours. And if you want to get in on the conversation, sign in right now to the By the Hood chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports, uh, the, the War Room Sports Game Time Group on the Group Me app, wherever. Just just holler at us, and we will chat with you during the show. You can also call us directly in about ten minutes after we talk college football with Fred Purdue and open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number, as it is every week, is three two three four one zero 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 one two. But before we get started, make sure that during the week when we're not live on the air, that you check out archive episodes of our show. Uh, you can do that at WarRoomSports.com. Uh, you can also do it at the World Room Sports mobile app, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Block Talk Radio. Man, whatever you do your podcast listening. B, I know we, we've been talking about it, um, and we, we, we rapped about it last week before it came, but Disney Plus is now here, and it's all the rage, and and, and frankly, dude, I can speak for myself, and I can speak for a ton of people that I've spoken to this week. It has very, very little to do with kids. Like, people are on here, and they're just on there nostalgia because it's a bunch of stuff from back in our day that's on there. And you got your Star Wars, your Marvel, your you got all of that kind of stuff. But when people say Disney, you immediately think about kids. But who's checking for kids right now? Did you grab a Yo. subscription yet, or are you holding out? I'm holding out. I'm a little upset that the Mandalorian is on because that's the race of people that I come from, the Mandalorians. And I'm supposed to be watching that first episode. I watched that first episode earlier today. Promising stuff. Go ahead and relax. Don't 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 tell don't tell me what it was. I'm I'm not a I'm not a spoiler. I don't spoil. But I'm promising. Yo, man, shout out to shout out, out to Dame for our theme music. I just wanted to say that, man. They need to give him a Grammy, uh, <laughs> Emmy, uh, Oscar, mm-hmm. and whatever else some white people be giving people for artistic creation. I know. At least give him a potty. At least give him a potty. Did I make that up? I just assumed they got podcast awards. I probably made it up because there got was podcast a award. there was a potty. Like, why haven't we gotten one in nine years? But hey, um. Anyway, we 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 like some Yo, of our man. favorite rappers. We ain't in it for the awards. I, Your I love is what that we I'm one of my favorite rappers. Favorite rapper. <laughs> right. I'm one of my Your favorite, favorite, one of y'all favorite, favorite podcasters. One of y'all favorite podcasters. <laughs> I'm one of her favorite podcasters. That's enough for right. me. Not even favorite. Inspiration. Those words were used to our faces by people that y'all revere because y'all see them on TV every day. So, so yeah, you know, you get that kind of love. It's all good. I don't need your potty. <laughs> anyway, man. Yeah, so Disney Plus, 10 million subscribers in the first day. Um, Of course, they're Damn. counting people. Of co- but, of course, they're counting people like me who signed up like three months ago. <laughs> that sign-up doesn't become official until they go live. So 10 million sign-ups the first day. 
So you're holding off me. While you're holding off, make sure, because I know you already got some, because we all do. Make sure you grab a little bit more of that stock, because that price also went up something crazy in the first day. So um, <laughs> do a little yeah. reload on that, because if they're going to get our money, you know we're going to get a lot of it back. That's the secret to life, people. Um, if you love it, Word is <laughs> invest in it. <laughs> Their success is your success, and you get to, you know, enjoying the success at the same time. All right, but let's get into this sports-ish thing we're here for. And before we get to Fred Purdue, who I see is waiting for us on the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline to talk a little college football, let you know that this segment is brought to you by my bookie War Room. Let's wrap real quick about how much bread you can make sports betting at my bookie. The NFL is past the halfway mark. The reason why we know that is because we gave you our halfway mark awards probably, what, two weeks ago, B? Um, but if you guys still haven't checked out my bookie, this is the perfect time to do so. I know, you know, for you NBA gamblers, this low management business is probably putting a hurting on, you know, the, your, your risk. Um, the fact that you might not want to lay down money because you don't know the inside information and when dudes are going to sit out and all that little stuff. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But look, I can lay down some scratch on the biggest games in sports, no matter what the sport is. Just join us and thousands of other online players placing bets at mybookie.ag. If you guys are tired of getting to run around from those other services when it's time to collect your chicken, give it a try. Just join my bookie. They want you win, they pay fast, no hassles. You're basically wasting your time betting anywhere else. They even have in-game live betting, so you can place bets after the game starts. So join now, and my bookie for the holiday season will match 50% of your first deposit, but only up to $1,000. So use the promo code WARROOM, all caps. Do I need to spell it? Y'all should be able to spell. Um, That'll activate your offer. Visit mybookie.ag today. Play, win, and get paid. That's all there is to it. All right, so on the line, we got the homie Fred Purdue from the Locked On Canes podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Fred, what's going on? Good, bro. Fred! What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? I was about to say, we're going to hang up on Fred again. <laughs> no, what's up, Fred? no, definitely not. Definitely not. Man, just, just sitting here watching uh, receivers throw your man Tom Terrific under the bus. Ooh. Watching Father yeah. Time catch up, man. Watching Father hey. Time catch up. Watching strength and schedule catch up. But, uh, uh, hey, man, hey, 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 you get you get your turn this Sunday. I was about to say, B, this ain't this ain't uh, the week for that, man. This ain't the week for that. This ain't the week for that. This, this, this ain't the week for that. Yeah, because they coming up into our they coming up into our building to see our trash team. We talk to them in a couple of weeks. This ain't the week for that. Yeah, we are um, trash. Yeah. Even though, you know, the last time we, we played, it was for all the marbles, and I'd, you know, rather take that win than this one. But, you know, if we get this one, too, it'll be all good. But let's talk some college football, because that's what Fred is here to do. First of all, give me the latest on on your Miami Hurricanes, man. Seems It seems to everybody that they've pretty much saved their season, at least up until this point. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so Miami's on a bye week right now, and after two big, huge, huge wins, one against Louisville, one against Florida State, Manny Diaz decided to give the team some rest this week, and quite honestly, the team needs it. The offensive line, full of freshmen. I mean, you have 50, I think it's 54 out of 75 scholarship players that are freshmen or sophomores. Uh, that's a good thing. There's a lot of youth on the team. That's great. Uh, just had senior day against Louisville where they, Miami dropped 52 big ones uh, on a Louisville defense that has been Swiss cheese all season. Uh, but Jaron Williams, the fresh, fresh, freshman quarterback, his arm looks good. He looks healthy again. Uh, things look like they've been righted somewhat. The running game is still a question, but I think Miami's found their QB1, and they may have found their wide re- their, their X receiver. I know, B. Austin, you love those X receivers, those height, weight, speed guys that just they look like Des Bryant, but they have hands like Jerry Wright. Hmm. Oh, 
Amen. Amen. Fred, not to cut you off, but let me just say, and I know you say this every week about nostalgia, and this is not your uncle's uh, Miami Hurricanes, but life isn't right when there's not a lot of gold teeth, chains dangling, diamond earrings, tattoos, Uh and Floridian Uh speak on the Hurricanes, man. I lo- I need more ignorance from that team. Less student athletes <laughs> and more grown men that came to the U to play football, slap asses, and go to Uncle Luke's mansion. That's what we need. Life is right when that happens. I just so want to say basically B you, is saying, man, back on to your hell with all this. He's saying to hell with all this cleaning up the pro- program stuff. <laughs> he like the ignorant you. Well, yeah. <laughs> the ignorant you were winners, man. <laughs> The ignorant you was winners, not ignorant. They was ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's when they were winning championships. I think you can win with a little bit of both. I mean, I I like the turnover chain. I'm cool with the turnover chain. I don't like the turnover yeah. or the touchdown rings. That's when you're taking it a little too far. But no, they got to they got to go back I, I to like, when they ran up off the plane with fatigues to see Penn State about oh, something. Yeah. Believe it or not, there are a few players that actually come off the bus with fatigues on current. Right. I'm not throwing I'm not throwing yeah. any names out there. But, uh, we getting back to it. We getting back yeah, you, to it when you showed up in a white Corvette with your chest open, your, your oh, windbreaker oh, open, yeah, your gold chain happen. dangling. You might not be able to read a book and you don't know math plus hey, past hey. four plus four, oh, but God, you win it. You winning, can man. I, can my guys be smart? America can my guys likes be smart? winners. <laughs> and, and listen, no respectability politics here, Fred. Man, let them let you run wild, man. That's what that's what the U is about. Yeah, I will right, say look, this. What I will, okay, okay. I will I will say this. Um, there's going to be this coming week. Miami is actually playing against uh, FIU their, and their former head coach who kind of had the greatest team in school history, one Butch Davis, is going, is the head coach over at, at FIU. And this game is going to be played at Marlins Park, which is on hallowed ground, because it's right where the, or- the old Orange Bowl is. So you're going to have a lot of old – the old players are going to be there. I, it's going to be a blowout. I mean, it, it is what it is. FIU is a 5-5 five and five team, and they're terrible. But at the end of the day – I think a lot of – it's been Don't a in these players. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this Miami team is much better than this FIU team. But what I think is going to, you're going to see Don't end up like the is bias. what you'll what? see in this, in this game is you're going to see a lot of the old uh, former players are going to show up because of what that mean, what this arena means to that program. Uh, the old Orange Bowl, it was – I mean, everyone was crushed, obviously, when they tore it down. And obviously Miami is now playing almost 45 minutes away from their actual the actual campus. Uh, for those of you that are uh, maybe living under a, on a, on a, under a rock, uh, the University of Miami is not actually in Miami; it's in Coral Gables, so it's a bit of a, a drive. But quite on, and they're playing in Hard Rock Stadium, which many fans don't like, and that's why you see a lot of empty seats. But at the end of the day. Um, I really think that this is going to be one of those nostalgic kind of moments for Miami. I think you'll see the turnover chain a lot early and often. Um, and Jaron Williams, the, the starting, the redshirt starting uh, freshman quarterback, he was he had six touchdowns last week, which was a, he tied the school record. And I think he this one could be for seven. He could easily go for seven. Okay. All right, well, let's because I know uh, you don't have too much time this evening, so let's go into two games that we wanted to talk about with you. Um, and the first of which is number ten Oklahoma uh, going to visit number thirteen Baylor. Thoughts? You know, you know they say there's this narrative that the Big Twelve plays defense because if at Alabama and LSU they can they can have a forty six forty one game and. They're, that's what they call defense in the SEC. So why can't we have a 50 to 52 type of game and it still be called defense? There's two. That's a, that's a farce. Uh, but in this game, you're going to see a ton of points. Oklahoma's defense under Alex Grinch is still giving up points. Uh, the former Washington State and Ohio State uh, defensive coach. I, I, what I think is going to you're going to see is a lot more of Jalen Hurts taking over the game. 
Baylor is fought, is undefeated right now, but they've been in a couple close ones with teams they have no business being in close ones with. Uh, Matt Real has actually had a really good turnaround here at Baylor since leaving from Temple. I I mean, I'm hearing rumblings that he may be the next guy at Florida State. They would be smart to do so, an offensive coach. But for right now, you're going to see a bit, you're going to see a, a bit of a, a shootout. But I think Oklahoma wins this one. Uh, Jalen Hurts continues to try to build his resume, although I think it may be a little too late. I think Joe Burrow might have already – the LSU quarterback has already kind of locked up this whole Heisman thing. But Jalen Hurts won't go down uh, without a fight in this one. You, I could probably – I could see 400 yards of offense just from him alone, maybe four or five touchdowns total. He's, he's evolving as a quarterback, and I really like what I see. On the other side, Connor Brewer, is a, he's a typical Baylor quarterback. He doesn't have a big arm, but the offense makes it features him and makes him a look a lot better than what he is. Uh, he has a bit of a – he has an average arm. Uh, he, he, what they're going to do is they're going to throw a lot of the shallow cross stuff. Uh, you're not going to see a, a ton of explosive plays. They don't throw it down the field a ton, but their defense is, um, is much improved from years past. So uh, Oklahoma tends to play down to teams that are inferior to them. Hopefully that doesn't happen. All right. And the other game that I wanted you to uh, give a little analysis on, Number four, Georgia, by way of, you know, the, the Alabama loss to LSU that, uh, you know, that has Georgia sneaking into that playoff mix for now. Probably won't be there for too much longer. But number four, Georgia at number 12, Auburn. You know, this, Can Auburn be the one Georgia, to knock them out of there? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I think Bo Nix, who was the number one dual threat quarterback coming out of high school last year, and as a legacy player, his dad was Pat Nick. I think he's one of the – he's going to be a stud, a superstar type of quarterback, especially in that offense as long as Gus Malzahn is there. But it won't be right now. He needs time to develop. Uh, he's, his, him in the running in the, in the option game is great, but as far as him as a passer, Georgia's going to take that away early in offense. How do you stop a, court, a, a young dual-threat quarterback who may only see half the field? You blitz him, and you blitz him into oblivion. And I think that's what Kirby Smart is going to really want to focus on, put pressure on a young quarterback and make him make mistakes that he normally wouldn't. On the other side, I think you just Georgia was – I mean, B, you got to yeah, reboot your mic or something, dude. You sound like Megatron. <laughs> yeah, I got part of it. I got part of that. Um, I'll take <laughs> – I, I, can't, I can't believe that uh, Bo Nix is going to be able – he's not really the capable passer that I want him to be just yet. But at the end of the day, like I said, the best way to beat a quarterback, an Auburn type of quarterback who is a, a runner, I mean, whether it's been Cam Newton, Nick Marshall, or whoever, or Jared Stidham, the way you beat those guys is you blitz them into oblivion and make them beat you and take, you take away the run, blitz them into oblivion and say, look, if you can beat us as a passer, God speed to you. Uh, for me, I think Georgia is going to come out on top in this game. I've always said since Kirby Smart has been at Georgia that – they want to be the old Alabama when Nick Saban first got to Alabama. They want to line up with two tight ends. They want to run the ball down your throat. They want to be physical. They have really big offensive linemen, uh, NFL-sized offensive linemen. Their linemen, are, they look a little bit different. And I think that Jake Fromm doesn't have to do a lot, just take care of the football. DeAndre Swift in the backfield, uh, James Cook, the brother of Dalvin Cook in the backfield, and the host of other running backs that they have. Couple that with Lawrence Cage, the former Miami wide receiver turned transfer, uh, as well. He, those guys are going to be able to score points. Uh, the the, out, the Auburn defense with uh, Derek Brown under at defensive tackle is going to be tough to run on, but he's the only guy they have. You run right at this team and say, "Look, you're gonna we're gonna wear you down. Play bully ball with them." Georgia can win this. I can see Georgia coming out on top in this game, like twenty four to ten. All right. Well, there you have it, Fred. Before you go, man, let everybody know where they can uh, listen to your show and where they can find you on social media. Definitely. You can find the show, Locked on Canes Podcast. You can find that on Twitter, at Locked on Canes. You can find myself on Twitter, at Fred Produce CFB. And, of course, go follow my co-host, Cam Underwood, at Underwood Sports. 
right. No doubt, man. Go out there, do what you got to do. Um, I'll probably be on social media to talk some trash on Saturday because I, I, I thank Fred. I actually have some time on the weekend now. Um, oh, but, wow. but only for a couple of on weeks. Only, only for a couple of weeks. But um, we will wrap to you next week, good bro. All right. All right. All right. All right. You guys need to make it strong. You're going to get the turn on Sunday. Understand it. We're going we to come to y'all. <laughs> We're going to get that work. All right. We'll see. We'll see. All right. All right, guys. B, you still you sound like Megatron, cuz. <laughs> I still sound like Megatron. Yeah, Arch either Green. that or the, or the LSU head coach. You sound like one of them. Uh, so hold it down while you take care of that situation. As a matter of fact, before we move on to the next thing, anyway, we're gonna go. Man, I wanted to. I, hey, hey, Tobias, I see you on the line, man. I didn't want to take your call until Jimmy got here. <laughs> Because I was just going to sit back and let you and Jimmy do what y'all do. But um, Jimmy out here running late. Like, as Tobias would say, you don't see the co-hosts on white shows showing up all late like they do on the war room. But, hey, it is what it is, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yo. All right. <laughs> all right let, let's do let, – let's go to some – um. Let's do some NFL games of the week real quick. I'm about to stall and yeah, rearrange sure. some things so we can set some things up here. Um, and we got, what, one, two, three, four, about five games that we can give some predictions to, maybe a quick analysis. Um, we got the Jaguars uh, at the Colts. Now, this will be the return of um, your man, my man, Nick, Nick Foles. Um, his return to the lineup in Jacksonville. He will be the starting quarterback. Um, Gardner Minshew has to take a back seat, at least for now. But I'm I'm looking at this situation as like the rookie. He had so much success. Um, not that he was a world beater, but he had some pretty good success. So I think Nick Foles and his injury probably didn't put him in a situation where the first signs of a bad game, people are going to be out there calling for, for Minshew. But we'll see how it goes. Um, who you got, Jags or Colts? I have the Jags just by virtue of Jacoby Brissett. I don't think he's in the lineup due to injury, correct? Uh, Jacoby, is he? Is he still? I don't know. That's a good I, question. I'll look it up. I think, I think it's going to be Brian Hoyer, and Brian Hoyer went out the last time Brian Hoyer saw a football field. He looked worse than me playing quarterback. Like literally, like he he, he was a he was a full participant participant in yesterday's practice. So he is, um, he's uh okay. Well, then change this thing against the Jags. Colts, <laughs> Colts. <laughs> yes, Colts. Uh, same for me. I mean, he had a knee injury, so we don't know how you know how how he's how his body's going to react to that when he's back in live action. But Jacoby Brissett has been a, a pleasant surprise, in, in my opinion. I mean, we saw him have some success as a backup. But we know backing up and, and spot duty is not the same as when NFL teams and highly paid NFL defensive coordinators get film on you and are able to, you know, throw a game plan together that's geared towards stopping you if they feel that you're good enough for a game plan geared towards stopping you. And I think Jacoby Brissett has basically shown um, to be a pretty good uh, quarterback in this league. I don't know how long he'll be a starting quarterback in this league. If Indy's, you know, willing to, to go to long haul with him or are they looking for a young replacement for um, Andrew Luck? We shall see. Let me, uh, let me ask you, let me ask you a question with what you see with Jacoby. And I think I know the answer. Where would you place him in comparing him to T-Mobile at his best? T-Mobile at his best versus Jacoby right now. Um, you talking about the Bo, uh, the Bo Vic? No, no, no. T-Mobile is uh, the other Bo. Oh, oh, you said T-Mobile. Oh, I was like, I thought you said He-Mobile. I'm like, somebody got a new Vic name. <laughs> like he ate me. 
Um, <laughs> um, at his best, I mean, I don't know. Jacoby Jacoby Brissett is more of you know your standard drop back passer, which you know I I, right. I feel comfortable speaking for you. You know that's what you and I pretty much like in a quarterback. You see how the excitement builds up for some of these other guys because of what they're doing with their feet. I'm like, well, that's not really the quarterback position. So I don't, I never understand the hype over quarterback being a running back. Um, Jacoby Brissett couldn't run if you asked him to. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. I would, I would lean more favorably towards him because he's shown that he can sit back in the pocket, read a defense, go through his progressions, um, and sling the ball when he has to. He's never put up any astronomical numbers, but he has surprised me for somebody who was probably deemed from the start to be a career NFL backup. So, yeah, I, 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 I must have told. I, and when I ask that, I know, I know stylistically it's very different, but T-Mobile is probably my – He's my baseline for a starting NFL quarterback. If you're worse than him, you shouldn't start. If you're better, I think you should compete for a starting job. I think Jacoby is better. I think he's a legit NFL starter. Like, I think he's a good quarterback. I think that somebody should take a chance on saying, here's, you know, 22, 20 to 25 million a year over three years. Let's see what you can do, young bull. Team. Well, when when, um, when Andrew Luck made his decision, the Colts did reach out with a small contract for Jacoby to kind of lock him up just in case. You know, the, the, he, he got the kind of money where you would think, all right, these dudes are probably going to go out there and look for a, a, a young starting quarterback. But that's only if Jacoby's not out there leading them to wins, which he is pretty much doing. So it's the kind of contract where, okay, he's taken care of a little bit if we become a successful team. Um, maybe something where he won't ask right away for that big okay. extension, that big redo. Here, now, but, um, we, here we go. Body of body of work. Body of work, not 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 hot hand. Jacoby or Dak. <laughs> and, I mean, Body of work, I, I know how you feel. I would probably still have to go with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott was surprised. He was a good he, – he was good even in his rookie season. I mean, but you know when a Cowboys quarterback plays well, then everybody goes overboard. You remember they were fitting him for his, his, um, his gold jacket in the preseason of his rookie year. Um, I think he took a little bit of a step back. In his second year, but he's been he's been solid. You know, I don't think he's the right. break the bank, set reset the market guy that a lot of people expect the Cowboys to do with him. I think they'll play themselves if they do that. But I, I would go back on this. Um, and, and the main reason I, being, I, he's been a starter since the beginning. A lot of Jacoby Brissett's body of work is from a backup standpoint. True. I, I ask that not based on my pure, pure and unadulterated hatred uh, for Dak, but objectively, I do think that this year Dak has Dak has shown and proved that he is more than just a decent starter. Like he he has balled in some of these games. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder. The issue that I have with Dak and the way that I watch football and particularly NFL football and NFL quarterback, I'm looking for certain throws and certain technical nuance, particularly touch, anticipation, and 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 accuracy and tight, you know, throws. Not not how far you can throw the ball or drive it, but you know, going across to the opposite hash in a tight window. Touch throw up the seam beyond the backer, but in front of the state, those types of things. I feel like Dak is a play action dude where the play action opens the passing up for him and he doesn't have to make NFL throws all the time. I'm seeing more NFL throws from him this year 
than ever before. The first two years, I really can't give them any credit because I feel like it was eight in the box no matter what, and there's a lot of dudes that can that can go out and do it's like It's like in the NBA when you give a decent guard, not an NBA guard, but a decent guard, you know, flat four, go 1v1 or pick and roll, you know, you may not be able to defend as an end but if you work your salt as a guard off the playground, like you can score in that. So that's what I feel about Dak versus the first two years versus this year. He, he's making some big boy plays this year. All right, let's let's go to the phone lines. I was trying to stall for the blueprint. We're gonna let uh Tobias Tobias calling in from Arizona. What up, Tobias? Hey, yeah, Todd got go to cold, man. Hey. Yeah, I gotta say this real quick because when the time difference changed, our time doesn't change. So y'all two hours ahead of me now instead of three. So I'll be here in the class now when the show starts. But uh, well, you well, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, LSU Jimmy, Jimmy, is more than two time. hours ahead of Alabama. That's for sure. Hey, I say <laughs> this though, I, I was more disappointed in our affirmative action black punter dropping them balls that bro, you're doing it for all of us. Uh, you're supposed to give us all these opportunities here at kicking game. But thing is though, it's crazy. It's like cause people know me. I said like Alabama, the, you know, as a fan, I'm like hell no, I'm not gonna pick LSU to win the game. But LSU had a great game. The quarterback played a great game. The running back played a great game. Alabama have dumbasses. Instead of trying to make a tackle, they're going for a strip. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of that going on. I like tackle the tackle the, bro, the, the dude first. But it just shows against good teams, you can't make mistakes. I think what lost them the game, and, uh, and I remember Michael Lombardi said, toward the middle eight, and like the end of the first four, last four in the first half. And the beginning of the first quarter, the second half. But two or through that pick, and you throwing the ball on your own 20 some yard line, and then the guy from Alabama had a personal foul on top of that. And that, and that taking a halftime to down 13, you down 20. And then yeah. remember the first possession after two of fumble, the guy's a senior from Alabama, go run onto the field, cause a 12, 12 men to huddle, which the gator an interception burrow through. So stuff like that adds up against a good team, but the better team won that day. But guess what? No, guys? I mean it's one of those we, things we can we can definitely relate as Eagles fans, and it's a captain obvious take. But you know, on that level, you know, I would cause, you know Eagles are NFL level, but the the goddamn Bama and LSU damn near NFL level too. On that level, you, pay like you, you can't <laughs> you can't get behind <laughs> early like that because. You'll be left with like only even though they only lost by a couple of points because they showed their medal, they showed how good of a team they were, and came back. The the bottom line is you cannot make those mistakes early and get behind, or you'll be sitting here just like Eagles fans telling you, man, we should be seven and two, or we should be this and that. But every game they got behind by double figures, and even though yeah, you show uh, in the second the half of the game. Is, yeah. You showed in the second half of the game that you were the better team. It's it's but really all for naught because it's hard to catch all the way up because you're expending a whole lot of energy just but trying to catch. And up. Also, and remember, like, and like people like to question Tua. I ain't gonna lie to. Him. I think the NFL scouts may be more like impressed with him now because of how he played hurt on one bad on that bad ankle and show and just and play his butt off. But he had a better team one. But I gotta say this, man. I gotta switch it up on this one, man. I heard, like, y'all was talking about, uh, I saw Chris Broussard and Rob Parker show they had Ryan Hollins on. And someone straight up said Ryan <laughs> Hollins is an expert of load management because he's a bench-warming guy. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, and, like, he was like, foot- yeah, and, and it's like football, for example. Uh, I saw Whitlock talk about this. You know, and I thought it's Colin Kaepernick workout. We all know it's a sham. And I think it's part of the whole non disclosure agreement. But Rick Buecher made a good point about Kaepernick, where he let people tell his narrative. Because, like, he, he did a podcast with Derrick Rose, All Star Game in Chicago this year, Derrick. But, uh, and people don't really, I remember this, I'm a fan. He was the first one to wear the I Can't Breathe shirt. But since Derrick Rose never talked, so and we don't want him to talk. I gave Bron the credit. And, <laughs> yes, and everybody thought Bron. And Derek was the yeah. one that was wearing it. 
Derek, um, Derek Rose's issue is we, we appreciate him because of where we come from in our lives and, and as black men from the inner city and urban environments, we appreciate what Derek is. But if someone, no one ever gave him speech class or media training. So if you go to the microphone and you look down to your right and you say, <laughs> that's how he talks. <laughs> and so he's never going to go beyond a certain level of marketability. I feel like Adidas were kind of foolish to sign him to that deal. Well, maybe not. I mean, James Harden has the type of personality. He gets in front of the mic, and he actually is entertaining. He has opinions. He's, he's going to talk. He's not Gilbert Arenas, but he's got a personality. Yo, Derrick Rose has the ability, has the, the personality of a wet piece of paper, and he talks with a speech impediment. Never going to sell. I just wanted to yeah. take the time to go yeah. on air again, but go ahead. Yeah, and I'll say this, and it's like with the Kaepernick thing, thing is that, one, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm like, dude, just talk. Just get out there. Don't want to pay you. Someone please pick him up after a while because after a while, it's like the story died down. I do believe it's part of the non-disclosure agreement. And, uh, and so, and the problem is that, okay, you're going to, in my opinion, He's better off never playing again, modern wise, marketability wise. Cause he gets out there and plays, and look to every bit of the guy who's been out of the league three years. To me, that's gonna hurt him. It's gonna hurt hurt his whole career. Three a thousand and one thousand six hundred and seventy nine percent, dog. We I feel like we're gonna talk about it later, so I don't want to get too far into my take, but but. This this is bad, man. This is really, really bad on, on a lot of levels. Like, Tobias, it, 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 it's beyond just Kaepernick, but what this move actually represents in the grand scheme of things and the masses, particularly the people of protected classes that, that Kaepernick is standing up for, man, this is, this is a true smack in the face, man. Like, it really, you know what, really, you know, really. You know, hey, you know, I say this and I ask you guys a question and take it off the air, but this shows how powerful white supremacy is economically. They go straight up say, we broke him. And to me, that's what's happened. That's what's going to happen. We broke him. We got the leader standard. And, and, like, if you stand, you stand. You don't, you don't. I don't knock anybody who goes whatever way they want to. But to me, that's a big symbolism there. But I got a question for you guys. I'll take it off the air. You know, I listen to Whitlock show when I be at work and stuff. You know, I, you know, I, I like seeing nocturnal animals dance around sometimes. But, um, but he asked a question: Why like, should the Saints move on from Teddy Bridge, move on with Breeze, and start Teddy Bridgewater? In my opinion, Breeze is forty. If you think Teddy Bridgewater is that dude, should you go ahead and grow with him? And if your team looking for a quarterback, would you be hesitant? If the Saints ain't gonna move on from a forty-year-old guy, for this guy, y'all keep telling me that's great. But hey, you guys have a good one, and I'll take it on here. Right. You too. Great. Um, what I well, my the 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 short answer for me is I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is that guy. I mean, people are gonna point to, you know, I believe they went something like five and zero while while Breeze was out. Um, he held down the ship, but if you look, if you watched any of those games, I mean, shoot, you can go to the box score if you're one of those box score warriors, and you're not really going to be impressed. But if you actually watched those games, Teddy Bridgewater was pretty much the glorified game manager, and everybody around him played well enough to to prop him up. It, it was, you know, it was quote unquote total team wins. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I would, strip him I would, I would all take, credit because uh, I would take, as a backup you can I'll, come up in there and 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 pee to bed and, and totally mess things up and he did not do that. But I would I, take, I, the word I take glorified. a forty year breeze over him for several Yeah, years. I would take the word glorified uh as the adjective out of there in front of game manager and just go with game manager. Yo, Teddy uh, is just a game manager, man. Who's is a game manager? That's all he is. Pretty much. I mean, because a lot of the games that I was watching, <laughs> he would not throw it uh, past 
two, three yards. A lot of a lot of check downs in in his game. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I'm you know saying. there's there are some people that we deem as Hall of Famers, some goats who you know are like check down masters right now. But you got to make your bread somewhere. Like you know they they weren't always yeah. um, of that ilk. I'll take Dan Marino. I'll take Dan Marino for one quarter right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't move on from, from Breeze uh, quite yet. You definitely play out the rest of this season, see how that goes. But even if I was thinking about moving on from Breeze, I think I'm going to have to try to, you know, find a it ain't Teddy. a start over, like a, a draft pick or something like that. And maybe Teddy could be the bridge, water, between those two quarterbacks. I see Bars. what you did there, Bars. <laughs> All right, so so real quick before we get into this whole Kaepernick thing, let's uh, finish with our, our picks here. Um, uh, probably this game is probably the game that's going to be deemed the game of the week. You have two front runners for MVP um, at the quarterback positions. We got the Texans going in to see the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, this should be a very interesting game. Um you know, two teams that's pretty much in the mix for uh, high seeded playoff spots right now. For me, the way that they're playing, not that they haven't lost any game, I just, I don't know. I, I got the Ravens in this one. I can't really see them um, losing a the game the way that defense is playing, the way Lamar Jackson is playing, um, doing it with his arm and his feet. Um, I would just implore the young man, like, I'm not one of those, I don't want you to slow down and not do what you do. I'm just imploring the young man to be a little safer because Lamar Jackson is out there the same size, height and weight as his backup, who is the bust Lamar Jackson, AKA RG three. Um, Bob, Bob, out there, like, not sliding, not running out of bounds, trying to run through people, taking hits like Lamar. You're proving a lot of people wrong with the way that you're balling right now. Do not cut it short and let injury, you know, come in the way of you being able to bang on your craft as much as you, you know, possibly can. Because we all know, and I'm not going to give dude this full excuse, but, you know, when you come in and you have some success and you get that injury that keeps you out for a while and you're not getting the reps, you're not getting the practice and all that kind of stuff, like, it's easy in this league to completely fall off if you haven't completely proven yourself up until that point. And I don't want to see that happen to the young man. So he needs to be a little safer in his scoops down the field. Yo, I like everything that Lamar stands for. I like him at the podium. Uh, I like him on the field. I like his arm talent. I like running. I'm just going to say the same thing that you said in the way that I say it. Yo, yo get your dumb ass down. Yo, stop taking these hits, man. Everybody, we, we all know you, 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 you don't have to test your masculinity against 260-pound men that run four fives. Like, we, we know you're in the league, bro. Get down. There's no cowardice in living the fight another day, man. Yeah. Like you said, you, you've got the bull that's your backup who can probably – who can probably – teach you a thing or two, but he's probably too busy in the mirror making songs and justifying why he should be starting if we know his ego and going after another white girl. But I, I believe that Lamar is supremely talented and we're seeing something special. And the only thing that's going to stop it is injury. And we know it's a game and it's a million dollar game and it's a filthy game. Some defensive coordinator at some point is telling one of his weapons Yo, I need you to, you know, crown of the helmet, take that 15 yard penalty. Mm-hmm. Take that 15 yard penalty. Um, Patriots at Eagles. You give your birds a, a shot in this one, winners of two in a row. Um, the Patriots, uh, last time we saw them, they were. Wait, did they play this week? Or was the last game they played when they took that L to the. To the Ravens, it was pretty bad. Either way, do you, they're coming into Philly. Do you uh, give the birds a shot in this one? Definitely have a shot. We're uh, three and a half point dogs. The key to this game 
is going to be getting Tom Terrific off of his square. Get him off his square. We don't blitz a lot. We need to blitz. We need to blitz and get, and put paws and put foots upon him. We got to hit that old man, you know. Make him yeah. feel his age in the fall. That, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that because we haven't, we haven't been getting the pressure like we expected to coming into the season. So you might have to send a couple of extra people, but, you, you know, not – not recklessly, not like, okay, every play we just going to blitz. Like, try to, try to, you know, I mean, he, he's an old head. He, he's very smart, you know, arguably the greatest of all time. So it's not like you're going to fool him with a bunch of looks. But at the same time, you have to do something different. You can't just keep showing him the same thing over and over again. And he's, you know, even if you have early success with that, He's going to pick that apart. But the offense of the Patriots is not even really the unit that you have to conquer to, to win this game. Um, oh, man. Know, the defense has been playing lights out until they met the Baltimore Ravens. Oh. So the Eagles offense is, is going to have to do something earlier and a little more often than they have I'm, been I'm, um, this season. I'm so, I'm so fearful of their defense, not because I think that it's world-beating, because um, their front seven is, is somewhere between good and very good. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. Their secondary, and that man, Stephon Gilmore, yo, Steph's a little different, man. He's a little yeah. different. Now, the problem that that creates is their strength on defense is our exact and utter kryptonite. We got Alshon Jeffries, who's slower than Zach Ertz, and and now dropping passes. You got an African in the slot who drops the ball because he don't have no arms. And then you got Jordan Matthews who walks in off the street and becomes our number one receiver. Like, yo, our <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to spend time on this. Just real quick, ah. easy. Your man Dez has been talking – you know, he's about to get back on his tour trying to get on the NFL team. Um, with that need, um, let's say Dez was doing it a week early. Would you have taken Dez or, or, or Matthews? Matthews. Because of his familiarity with, the, familiarity with the system no. and the coach. and all not, that not, just, not just the familiarity with the system for whatever reason it is. Mm-hmm. Jordan Matthews looks like a legit NFL wide receiver with no one but Carson Wentz. Like, their friendship, their connection, it's second only to Zach Ertz, and it's because Zach Ertz and he are together all the time. But Carson Wentz makes Matthews look like he really is Jerry Rice's nephew. <laughs> Chicken Jerry, cousin. <laughs> All right, so these, these last two, yeah. we don't need any analysis because we were just trying to stall until Jimmy got here anyway. Um, and, yeah, and we didn't pick build, a winner. I, I, build, I got the Patriots. Uh, objectively, I got the Patriots winning yo, that game. Patriots. What did you say, Jim? All I'm going to say is this, man. I said I'm in the building, but, you I would have taken Dez because – so the thing about Dez is I think people, because of um, the fact that, you know, out of, out of sight, out of mind, Dez was mm-hmm. a, on his way to being a great um, outside of his issues. He had, like, you know, Dez yeah. issues where, you know – but – on the field, Dez was a, like Dez was a threat that you had to account for every single play. Like I don't but think you, people ever think about yo. I got years. a team for Jordan Matthews. You know what Dez is, Jim, and and I'm not. You know, this is something that the Eagles can use. I mean, <laughs> wait, if you take wait a chance. Yeah, no. If you if you take a chance on Deshaun Jackson, who's never healthy and does one trick. You can take you can take a chance on Dez. He's a fifty fifty ball man because Dez he, he's not you know, a, a excellent route runner or anything like that, but you can throw the ball up and Dez is going to go fight for it and go get it. You don't have that on the team right now. Sometimes, you know, I mean, cause we've talked all season um, about, you know, like what else can Carson Wentz do? He got to put the football on a spoon and go walk it to these dudes. He can't throw it to himself and catch it. Dez is the type of dude he might need. Like you get under the rest, you just throw the ball up. You can't do that right now because these dudes barely catching the ball when you put it right on their numbers. You need somebody 
that's going to go up and make tough catches. So that's why, you know, I definitely would have given Dez a shot, especially at his lowest point, because he ain't going to demand any more money than a Jordan Matthews. So for so, so if everything's equal, yeah, I would have taken a chance on Dez too. Um, real quick, is, Bears is at Rams, what, Chiefs guy? at Chargers. What'd you say, Dad? Bears and Rams, Chiefs and Chargers. Bears and Rams, Rams and Chiefs. Um, I think I'm gonna go Rams and Chiefs as well. Um, Mitchell Trubisky has proven to be a piece of uh, dog doo doo, and <laughs> yo, um, Chiefs are Mitch kind of desperate right Mitch now. Trubisky. Six and four. Trubisky. <laughs> um. Who's better, Trubisky or um, Cutler? Or Trubisky. or um, what's the other uh, quarterback? What's the other Grossman? <laughs> the Yo, Super the Bowl had like Bowl. 50, uh, Yo, the Bears, they uh, having some trash about... quarterbacks Yo, with potential. Yo, Yo. <laughs> they stay with trash quarterbacks <laughs> with potential. <laughs> when you have a quarterback. Yeah, he can make like all the throws, else. but he's garbage. <laughs> all right. Because we were, quarterback like Jim, earlier we were stalling because Tobias had called in. Um, so it was no way I was trying to take that call after an Alabama loss without Jimmy being on the line. Oh, yo, Tobias man. told me. Oh, he, 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 he told me, yo, he he told me in the chat that he had to go to class, so he needed us to take the call. Yeah, all right. I don't know if he had to go yeah, to class right. or he just saw his opportunity since Yo. Jimmy wasn't in the building. Tobias, you're going to hit on the replay, man. I'm a, I already cooked you in the, in the group chat, but I'm just going to say one thing, man. Yo, bet the mortgage, man. <laughs> bet the mortgage. Yo, that's, yo, Tobias be talking so much stuff before I, before Big for those, Alabama. I mean, he's for those like Joe don't Burrow, know what I'm talking about. Joe Burrows is going to get his, uh, his, his Heisman talk taken away this weekend, just like Leonard Fournette did when he came into Alabama and Joe Burrows went up there and put it on their shoulder <laughs> for four quarters. Yo, Maybe not for four. He didn't play that well. Was the on half, their shoulder, so he it. put it on their shoulder in the first half, at least. Yo, this boy Tobias hit us up the morning of the game in Texas and said, yo, Alabama, he said, he said the point spread is whatever it is. It's Alabama. Y'all could bet the mortgage. Um, now, if I would have took his advice and foreclosed, I'd have been moving right in. And I would have told you I'm moving <laughs> to Arizona. Yo, but I need a place yo, to Jimmy. live. <laughs> yo, 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 Jimmy. Tobias hasn't got off the line that fast in seven years. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want that yeah. word. It's He's like, yo, from the, the time, time, from, the the time job, from out. From the time he got on the air, typical on a typical one of our typical shows, right now would probably be about the middle of his call. <laughs> Yo, Bull been gone for like five Yo, minutes. Tobias, Tobias, Tobias is no longer a caller. Smoke, That's just a segment. Uh, Yo, sometimes we let man Rob smoke. have it's a segment good, if we feel like laughing. <laughs> Yo, it's all, all right, so let's talk about this because guess what? This... They're gonna they're gonna let Alabama in the playoffs and they're gonna get smacked again. So we're gonna see. Yeah, they they definitely gonna let them in. You see, they only put them back to number five. So and then put Georgia at four what, what because they know is? they know Georgia has some games coming up that they're not gonna win, which will hop Alabama right back into the mix. They're not slick. Um, Colin Kaepernick is getting an NFL workout this Saturday in Atlanta. Um, this workout. All 32 NFL teams were invited to this. This is like a pro day type workout where everybody has to come to one place to see Colin Kaepernick, who says he's been ready for this for three years. But there's been a lot of things going around about this particular workout. Um, A lot of the secrecy and the details of it, um, who's supposed to be involved, uh, people's opinions of it. Um, when they first heard it versus their opinions of it after they heard a few more details. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a whole story, and we can talk about this for a while, and we will talk about it for a while because I want to get you guys um, in-depth opinions and analysis on what the hell is going on um, this Saturday. So let me read some of the details before we get into it. What? I'm like I said, the league has organized what? a pro-day style workout. 32, they, they invited all 32 teams to attend. Okay, one, okay, of the, all the way. 
one of the peculiar things in this whole thing is supposedly they didn't announce this. Colin Kaepernick claims to not have heard any word of this um, from his representatives until Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, and then it was announced uh, by memo to all 32 NFL teams at 4 p.m. that same day. Of course, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, those guys got word of it, and they had already been reporting it all day. So that's the first peculiar instance that, okay, you're going to have a pro-style workout with all 32 teams in attendance, and we're telling you a few days before it's going to take place on a Saturday. So even though we're inviting GMs and coaches, pretty much know that not a lot of them can show up because Saturdays are important days in the NFL schedule. Um, people will be, you know, most teams will be traveling to their destination for the weekend. Of, almost half the league will be traveling, checking into their hotels, getting their stuff ready, walkthroughs and 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 uh, game plans and all that kind of stuff. It's a real busy time. So at most, people are going to be able to send scouts. They're going to be able to reroute some of their scouts that were, were going to go see some college football games on Saturday to go to Atlanta to see Colin Kaepernick um, work out. Now, when this story first dropped, you know, we got our finger on the pulse. You know, we got all our social media pages, so we see people talk. We talk sports all the time because people ask us about sports 24-7. So I'm seeing a lot of people out here, fellas, who from the door thought this was fishy, thought it was a PR stunt by the NFL. Everybody's asking the question, like, why are they doing this and why are they, why are they doing this now? Then some more information came out of how when people usually do have workouts for teams, they do it on a Tuesday because that's the best day for the head coach and the GM to be available to go see stuff because that's the day that people are off, no practice, blah, blah, blah. So people were hating the whole idea. Then there was a rumor that Jay-Z had some influence in putting this together. And all of a sudden, those same people thought this was a great idea. And they were saying, we told you Hove was playing chess and not checkers. And if I hear that goddamn um, let's quote one more time. I'm gonna kill somebody. So, what is y'all? What, what What are your thoughts? We'll We'll dive into some more details as we converse on the subject. I'll bring up some more details. But what are your thoughts of this whole debacle? Is what I'm gonna call it right now. You got first, this man like auditioning. Off, first, I'd like to start off with two quotes. Uh, the first is, "I'm not a rapper. I'm a hustler. It just so happens I know how to rap." The second is I dumbed down my lyrics to double my dollars. Y'all criticize me for it, but y'all all yell holla. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I can noodle. <laughs> Yo. Um, go ahead, Jim. I got mad bars. Oh, I, I just, all right, well, I just want to say, like, you know, briefly, I'm going to let you get all your bars off. I'm going to let you get your Cappadonna on. But um, this whole thing is nothing but an issue because the idea that it's Saturday during the season when games are played on Sunday, what coach in their right mind is going to show up on a Saturday to watch the ball when they got a game the following day? Like, what world – like, are we not that stupid? Like, like if that's what's crazy. The average fan isn't that stupid. And this whole angle of Jay-Z set it up, is it really set him up for failure? Like, you know, you're God not that stupid. You're not that. No, but I don't even think the that, average I, fan. I don't, that, I don't even think the average fan is that stupid. Be now with so much information and so many people like you know pointing out the obvious hypocrisy. But I think the fact is, people when they like someone, they just ride for it. So let's just say for argument's sake, someone did show up. He did get a job. They're going to use that as a way to praise the ball ungodly. It's going to be hard to actually be online um, during the course of the rest of the season. But I, the whole thing is just weird to me. I don't understand it. Like, no one was even really talking about Kaepernick. He hasn't been in the forefront of any conversation. So what's the – like, this comes out of nowhere to me. Like, I, I, it's, it's, it's something else going on. I just haven't figured it out yet. But it's, it's something more, it's right. something more um, demonic going on right now. <laughs> the demonic. No, because you know when these type of stories come out, the, the details come out so slow. So we're already forming opinions just, just off first words. So the first thing – you know, 
I didn't really say anything about hearing about the workout. I'm like, okay, I don't, what's this? And tried to wait for some more stuff to come out. But then Kaepernick sent the tweet saying that he's been ready for this for three years, said, I just got word um, that I have this workout on Saturday. My first thought was, okay, Cap is capping right now. I'm like, he lying. Like, how you got to work out <laughs> on Cap. Saturday and you have just now found out about it. But now that all these details have come out, I don't know what's true. I don't know if he really did at that point just find out about it. Or, like the reports are saying now, he literally found out about it on Tuesday morning. His representatives tried to ask them to maybe push it to a Tuesday when more people can show up or push it back to next Saturday so, you know, it'll be out there for more people to decide, you know, if they can, what they can do, and he would get more time to um, go ahead and get ready for it. But in my mind and a lot of people that I've spoken to, it kind of seems like he's being, again, set up for failure because they're rushing the whole thing. So he has to scramble to get ready. But then you look at this from both sides and, like, just the, con- you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but some things you can look at and, like, well, is Cap complicit in any of this? Because a lot of times, and on this show, we've dis- we've discussed, we've tried to get to the bottom of whether or not we even think Colin Kaepernick really wants to play again Um, because like Tobias said when he was on earlier, you know, him getting a job again, it kind of messes with his martyrdom. And if he gets a job and doesn't perform well, given the opportunity to perform, then it really messes with it because a a bunch of people are going to say, well, I told you so he wasn't, he was no good to begin with. And we made all of this hoopla and then he got on the field you know, and that and that lacks a lot of context because he's been out of the game for three years. So if he does come in, have a has a wonderful workout, and then gets the chance to perform and performs well, then hey, he's just that's just great. But it's difficult to see something like that happening after a three year layoff on a, of a professional sport. But sometimes, you know, because of his lack of vocalizing, like we really don't know. Over these past two, two and a half years, if he really wants to play or not, or is he posturing, because we all know at this point, him not getting back into the league, it it lends itself to the narrative of the black ball, and it'll just look better on him and the whole history of this if he never plays again and and just remains our hero. So it's a lot of stuff to unpack with this whole thing, man, but it's very peculiar, the details of it and the secrecy of it. Yeah. It's, um, it's something demonic going on. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's take the, let's take the position that Colin Kaepernick is a sincere and genuine dude. He's played football all his life. He's excelled at it. He's enjoyed it. I genuinely believe that he would like to play football again. I also genuinely believe that he took a stand and continues to take a stand against social, racial, and human injustice the world over. In this country, we know that's particularly historically been against black people and and other groups. As I look at this, the loss here, the L that is taken, is Colin took a stand. He didn't articulate it very well, but he took a stand. He created a, a, a or was the poster child of a movement. <laughs> well, when he the started, chain, he articulated it well enough. It's just that nobody chose well, right. to listen. You know, nobody chose to listen to him. The audience, I believe, that he still was looking for to listen and acknowledge, still chooses not to listen and not to acknowledge. By and large, there are some that do, but by and large, the, the, the cultural shift that he was looking to be a catalyst for, in my opinion, didn't happen. So now, the, Roger Goodell's employers have slid him a note and said things have calmed down. Things have died down a little bit. We're three years into this. 
He's 32. What's the damage to us if we give him this bullshit shot? We bank on the fact he's been out for three years and he won't show well enough to get signed. But even if he gets signed, what has he done? What damage does it do us? And we still aren't ready or willing to step up and acknowledge exactly what he was protesting. So if they allow him back in, it almost waters down the message that he has because we know the owners of these teams are going to say, look, we didn't mistreat Cap. We gave him a shot, and we let him back in. We acknowledge the error of our ways. This is really, when he, really when he's old and washed. <laughs> when he's <laughs> old and washed. He ain't, my, he ain't Muhammad Ali. He ain't regaining the crown at 32 years old in the NFL. He was never that type of quarterback to begin with. So, yeah, this is, this is some bull jive stuff. KKK yeah, all the um, way. I was reading that his representatives now, and they, you know, they keep saying his representatives. Um, it's always the vague type of language like that, but Collins' representatives are what they're wondering about the legitimacy of this workout, wondering if it's a PR stunt. Um, his guy, uh, Eric Reed and, and Kenny Stills both said, you know, they're a little uh, skeptical about the whole thing. You don't know whether to take that with a grain of salt or not because Eric Reed is just always mad. So <laughs> you you really can't redo because it's not many times you're going to see him get in an interview and he's happy and smiling about anything. So he's a little bit skeptical. We haven't heard from Nessa or heard, you know, any secondhand information of what Nessa thinks. But I, like I said earlier, I found it interesting that there was a lot of people thinking the same way, thinking this, this reeks of a PR stunt, um, that this, this just doesn't seem legitimate. Like they're doing this on a day when major NFL brass, there's no way that they can show up. Um, I read a report. They claim to have 11 teams confirmed. You invite 32 NFL teams. 11 teams have confirmed that they're going to send somebody. So it might be some, you know, NFL janitors in attendance um, yeah. with, with cell phone video to those, come back. Those, and, yeah, yeah. those <laughs> are the NFL owners standards. who concocted. Those are the NFL owners who concocted this whole scheme and put the proposal to the Roger Goodell and told him, "This is what you're going to do." Right. That, that's but yeah. But like I said, just just having the, the pulse of the fans, it's just crazy to see people so skeptical about something, and then soon as a report, soon as Michael Rappaport, not Michael Rappaport, what's the the writer, whatever, soon as he says, um, you know, Jay Z may have had some influence on this, everybody starts to backpedal. And I told you, y'all had to wait. Jay-Z flexing his muscle. He got a seat at the table. I'm like, but weren't y'all just saying that this was, uh, you know, they're trying to set Cap up and this is illegitimate and this is a PR stunt. So now you're saying Jay-Z is complicit in doing so, but because he's Jay-Z, you don't care because he's playing chess while you guys are playing checkers. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Guys, speed the Cap. I don't know what's going to happen on, on Saturday. Um, it says as you know, he's going to have a workout and then I think individual teams are going to be able to interview him. So the teams that do spend the time to do this and send people, I mean, you know what those interview questions are going to, uh, consist of. It's going to be a bunch of questions asking him if he plans to stand, stand, sit, or stay in the locker room or whatever for the national anthem. Um, and I'm wondering if Cat stands up and, and not back down from his original position, like, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? And what are the reports going to be after this debacle? So do y'all see it? What's a win for Colin Kaepernick in this situation? Is it to get signed by somebody? Man, oh, you know, man. that's interesting because that's a great question. That, there's so many things that come with that because if he do, let's say he does and he gets the opportunity to play, like, and he doesn't kneel, 
I just don't. I don't know what the man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he has to know. weigh these things. Like, I don't know how important, you know, his place in history as far as being a social activist and the person who spearheaded this whole NFL thing. I don't know how important that is to him. Um, but if it is important to him, if it is in his mind in any type of way, like he really has to approach this carefully before making any decisions because you know how quick pe- people will flip on you these days because he can go from a hero to a sellout just like that. So, you know, it depends on what you All the, all the, uh, all the sellout matrix plugged in black people that support Jay-Z already don't bang with cats. They've shown that. <laughs> yeah, because they've, act, they've actually made this whole thing not about him. Their opinion of it depends on Jay-Z's involvement in it. All right, so we'll, we'll get back to this in a minute, man. We got Gus on the line to give us uh, his picks for the week. Um, last week, Gus was 3-2. and two. And for the season, he is 27 and 22. So we're going to get him on the line here and get this week's picks. Gus, what's going on, good brother? How y'all doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, Before you give your picks, though, mm-hmm. let's, let's get your opinion on this whole Colin Kaepernick workout that 11 teams have signed on to send a representative to on Saturday in Atlanta. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it just in the little listening to you, uh, the y'all conversation, it sounds like to me I'm I'm pretty much in line with what you're saying. It, you know, it's it's um, it's vintage PR NFL. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, they if he doesn't come, then they say, well, we offered him one, and he didn't want to come, so that's on him. And if he does come, um, like you said, you got teams that are. Typically Saturday, they're their last minute stuff for the game on Sunday, and their or and or their scouts are at college games. So you know, typically these things, these tryouts will happen on a Tuesday, where if everything goes well, the player in an emergency at least can actually play on Sunday. But they, right. they clearly don't want that. They can so, make a decision on Tuesday or Wednesday morning. He can actually you make a decision. Watch there, practice on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens if yeah. you really – and it's not the NFL that calls them, teams call them. So it's it's clearly um, just a PR thing. Uh, I think this is what, you know, powerful people do. They they, they, they give the appearance um, and give themselves um, what we call plausible deniability on things. And, and the NCAA is doing it as well on uh, in terms of the uh, image of players. and things. They're trying to make it seem like they're interested in that now. They're, 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 you know, they're just trying to co-opt the, the movement that they can't stop. And, you know, it's right. it's a typical power play. And, you know, I, it, it's just nice that I think the one good thing about it, I think more people see it for what it is as opposed right. to just kind of going for it. So that's a positive thing you can take from it. The craziest thing to me is just the timing of it. Like, like what makes week 11 special? <laughs> like, like in the middle of preparation for week 11, we're going to call Colin Kaepernick and get this PR stunt out of the way so we don't have to think about it anymore. Like, well, well, like somebody was saying to us earlier, like Kaepernick wasn't even deep in the news, so it wasn't like the pressure was on for them to do something at this very moment. But I guess you get it out the way, you rush it during a, an NFL week instead of hey doing it in the off season when he has time to train and all that kind of stuff. I, like you said, they get to say that they did it. <laughs> when, when's, when's the deadline for um, getting credit for a year, though? Isn't it around here? It wasn't it week ten or. Isn't that I why it um, already? Yeah, so you know, maybe that so, maybe that has so something to do with it. That might have played a we role. We put him on the team why, and not have to pay his ass. So. That, I mean, well, credit for towards um, um, his pension and things of that nature. Uh, yeah. That's why the um, the Washington tackle rep, um, reported when he did, because you know, right. there's a certain point where, and I, you know, I'm just speculating. I don't know, um, but he I know that the NFL, they play think through all that stuff. He not want to lose his bread either. <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah. they they pulled something on him anyway, but yeah, yeah, he definitely doesn't want to play for them. All right, so let's let's get into these picks, man. This is a crazy league, crazy world we're living in right now. We're gonna start with an over under. We got the Saints and Bucks. The Saints went out there and laid an egg last week, 
um, to everybody's surprise. But as much as they were rolling, you kind of had to, you expected that at some point, maybe yep. not to look the way it did. But Atlanta is a division team, so no matter yep. how, no matter what you think of them, it was they were capable. Um, so Saints Bucks, the over under on that game is fifty. Yeah, this is um. Uh, a lot of the matchups in that division, their history is pretty high scoring. Um, you know, the Bucks can score on anyone. They, they can't stop anyone. So they're a good over team. Um, I think certainly that's as pedestrian as I've seen Drew Brees look in a long, long time. And so I expect them to come out firing on all cylinders. I'm taking the over there. Right. And and what's even crazier is even though he looked the way he did the first week he came back, uh, looking pedestrian last week led a lot of the talking heads to start the Drew Brees or Teddy Bridgewater conversation. Like, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prisoners of the moment, boy. You're not allowed to have one mediocre game before people start talking about you being 67 years old. All right. <laughs> we got the Jets and the Washington professional football team. The over-under on that one is 38 and a half. That's the bumble. Um, I think that um, and I actually think that there there should be a bumble. I mean, even Miami has surpassed uh, these two. Um, Callahan's going to try to run the ball a lot with Adrian Peterson um, to try to protect um, to try to protect the the rookie quarterback. And I mean, the Jets don't have much else choice but to try to run um, um, Le'Veon Bell. I tell you, you know, the Jets can get as mad as they want about uh, that that leaking out about. Um, Darnold being mic'd up and talking about he's seeing ghosts. Come on now, what did you ghost. expect? I mean, I'm sure all the defenders run by him now and just say boo. Vinkman. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be a that could be a that could be a six three. There was a game between the Jets and Washington, I think it was out ninety three that was actually three to nothing. And wow. uh I don't think this will be I mean they can they can double that and then triple that and and they still won't make thirty eight points, so I'm taking the under. This is crazy because you know when Washington has hit the bottom of the barrel, um, you know they they're consistently a mediocre franchise. They have been for a while. That's but kind. right, right. But <laughs> living in the area, like I'm, I've always been interested in the team. I always watch their games. Like I have no interest. And living here right now, like I, I have no interest in the Washington team right now. Like I don't plan on turning to their game. They they're really bottom of the barrel when I'm not even going to tune in to hate. So <laughs> I, I, think I saw it. I saw a posting that said um said some of the tickets are going as low as ten dollars. I mean you know a round trip metro cost you more than that. But well the funny part for that last game of the season last year when they played Philly I got fifty yard line seats for free. Dude didn't even <laughs> want my ten dollars. I'm like. I'm like, I feel bad. Like, yo, I, come on, let me give you something. Like, <laughs> so that's how frustrated the people have gotten with this team. The crazy part is, they still have this money tied up into this franchise, and until yep. they don't, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's really gonna be in panic mode about making any changes, you know, until until people start pulling that that financial support. So we'll yep. see if the bumble lives up to everything it's supposed to. Under 38 and a half. And most of the points they do score might be scored by Sam Darnold and, and, and Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Washington might get the even shorter end of that stick. So we have the Dolphins uh, versus the Bills. The spread on this one is six and a half. Yeah, Bills are six and a half point favorites. I don't think the Bills are ready to be six and a half point favorites on the road against anybody. It's a division game. Dolphins second time around against the Bills. Fitz magic, I know it. You know, you never know when it's going to be there and when it's not going to be there. But the, yeah. at the very least, he takes some shots down the field. I wouldn't be shocked if they beat Buffalo, but at, at the very least, I can see the Dolphins covering the six and a half. Right. I, I you know, Baltimore. I mean, when Buffalo were was winning all of those games early in the season, um, I really didn't believe in them. Um, I had some people even talking trash to me as an Eagles fan when the Eagles were going up there to play. Um, not a game that that I felt, you know, even as bad as the Eagles were playing. Not a game that I felt, you know, there was always confidence there. I was like, you know, there's still the Bills until proven until they prove otherwise, at least for a full season. And 
Yeah, there's just something about the Bills that I'm not really impressed. Of course, the defense is very formidable, but they got to show me more. <laughs> yep. So, I, so yep. I, I agree with you. I think the Dolphins, it's possible they can go in there and win. Um, this game might be the game of the week. I'm pretty sure it's being billed as the game of the week. We got the Texans at the Ravens. I believe the Ravens are four-point uh, favorites in this one. Yes, um, the Watson Jackson show, and it, it's if there's MVP a can't candidate. miss MVP candidates. If there's a can't miss TV thing, um, this game would be it. And I think also, you know, I think in Tom Brady and Breeze, we're seeing the last of a dinosaur breed of the traditional back trap drop back quarterbacks. Athletes mm-hmm. on the defensive end are so athletic. I mean, that drop back just stand back there. I know they have subtle movement, but I don't know if you're going to be able to survive. I think. What we're seeing in Watson and Jackson and, of course, Russell Wilson, that's pretty much going to be the prototype, um, I think, going forward in the NFL, and whether the people like it or not. I mean, I think it's going to get to the point where if you want to win, you got to have a quarterback that can move. He doesn't have to be running every down and over that, but he's got to be able to move. So I think you're going to see that on both sides of the ball. I, you know, I think it's going to be a very exciting game. I think the Texans not only cover, but this is my upset special of the week. Okay. Great, great point. No, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great point as well, and I think teams in the future, since I think a lot of people are in agreement that this will be the prototypical quarterback in the NFL, I think teams will just go into drafting these guys without the expectation of having a guy for the next twelve to fifteen years. I think they, that might they be know that, that might be a point. Yeah, I think they know they're going to go into so, it so, knowing like our. Our quarterback shelf life is going to be shorter. So while he's here, we got to do everything, you know, to try to win with him because, you know, we're not going to have these guys sitting around until they're 40 or 38, 40 anymore. Because so what, I hear y'all play, saying, what I hear y'all saying is, what I hear y'all saying is, is a spot for Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> <laughs> there was always a spot for him. You know that. <laughs> Right, 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 right. <laughs> and, 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 and we could say that while also admitting that, um, you know, he never performed on this level that these guys are performing. He was just right. better than a lot of the guys in the league now. So, right. you know, right. the bottom line is the quarterback position, the, the demand is always going to outweigh the supply. That's just basic economics. And so it's, it's just, it's just all, the, all the more – Listen. Thank you for saying that. I've been saying that on the show forever. People act as if like uh, great quarterbacks just fall off a tree. Like no, 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 no. no they Shout don't. out to Nathan Peterman. Best of the <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, last but not least, we have the Chiefs and Chargers. Um, the over under on that one is fifty two points. Yeah, another desperation game for both teams, really. Um, mm-hmm. Mahomes is back, and the and the Chiefs still lost, which kind of reveals their their central weakness. They they just can't, they just don't stop enough can't, people. Can't um, stop anybody. Weapon to, yeah, I mean, because quite as kept Matt Moore played very well in in the absence of Mahomes. Um, the Chargers are desperate. It's a division game. I see a lot of points here. I'm taking the over in this one. Okay. All right. So that's it for this week. Um, Yeah, we'll see how this goes, and Gus, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Enjoy, gentlemen. All right, you too. That's Gus Griffin, everybody. Go out and place your wagers. Um, Yeah, y'all got uh, any any final thoughts on this weird Colin Kaepernick uh, workout that's going on Saturday? Or I just want to move on. It's just real sus. Um, I I, 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 just, I just I just want to see how this whole I just want to see how this whole thing plays out. Um, I hope that it's live streamed somehow on the net. Like you know, what I mean, we in 2019, so you gotta put it out there on. I mean, go live on IG or Twitter or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I just hope that we get a chance to see it to see if he see how bad he looks or 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 good he looks. Pause. Um, and I want to see how the whole thing plays out because now. Let's just say it is a sham, and, and all the teams that sent players, people there, sent like you know their version of radio, like their their mascot for their team, um, to come watch him play, and then he get then he still gets no run. Like, are, is Jay Z going to take criticism then, or is it still, he you know seat at the table, he got yeah. a chance? Like, I just want to see how this whole thing plays out. 
They're going to have swoop up in the building with a clipboard. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> They're going to take yeah. swoop out that piece. He's going to be escorted by the Philly fanatic. Um, all right, so quote of the week, man, and this comes on the heels of the Houston Rockets getting a win over the Los Angeles Clippers with James Harden scoring 47 points. And uh, Russell Westbrook says after the game, Pat Bev trick y'all, man, like he playing defense. He don't guard nobody, man. He's just running around doing nothing, all that commotion to get 47. So he cited um, his 47, and this led he, – he cited Harden's 47, and this led – a lot of talking heads to a conversation of, well, is Russell Westbrook, is he right? Like, has has Patrick Beverly, with his energy and his aggression and his antics, has he frauded his way into a reputation of being an elite defender? Or do you guys think he's legitimately uh, um, an elite defender? I had to think about yeah, it. I was listening to a conversation on NBA radio today. Great. And I had to think about it because those guys, they were masking. It seemed like they really wanted to agree with Russell Westbrook. But in this PC world, they were afraid to just outright say it. So they were masking it with a bunch of compliments for Patrick Beverly. But it kind of sounded like at the same time they were saying, well, Russell's right. So what do you guys think? Is he an elite defender or <laughs> – has he tricked us all into thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I think here's the crazy part. I think both. I think that he made himself an elite defender answer. by tricking us. <laughs> yeah, that's because that's what it is. Like that's 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 that's, that's you know what I mean. Listen, man, that's Fendi. You know what I mean, as the young people say, that's Fendi, man. Like he he made himself. His hard work, even though it just appears to be hard work, running around doing nothing, he got himself paid. Um, right. He made himself one of my favorite players because of his um, <laughs> his arrogance. Although he has no reason to be arrogant, he, like he's made himself like into one of them players, like Jim. That everybody like, I'll take him on my team any day. Like, exactly, <laughs> everybody guy. says that, man. Like, yo, him, him, and the other short boy up in Toronto. I'm sorry, he the next coming. He the next coming to Patrick Beverly. Pause. Uh, Van Vliet. What's the boy's name? Um, Van Fleek is a Fred new Van Patrick Beverly man. Van Fleek, yeah. Van yo Van Fleek even has more confidence than Patrick yeah. Beverly. Van Fleek thinks that he's he thinks he's Kobe. Like you can't tell him he's not Kobe. Yeah, you nah, know, Kobe, Van so, Fleet and Kobe. Van Fleet and uh and and Dude's game is completely different though. Both have a an no, 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 but I'm amount talking about, of confidence. I'm talking about no, I'm talking about his end. confidence level. Yeah, yeah. Confidence. No, and, and Jimmy and I talked about this it, earlier, like. Mamba mentality is playing in the league right now, and it might not be a good thing. You know how we always say Yo. Mike Mike messed up the league yep. by the expectations. Kobe gave it a name. Man, Kobe got everybody Kobe running around with this Mamba mentality, and it's, it's yeah. Kobe right. gave it a name. Kobe actually put a name to it. Where cats now be like, right. "Yo." I'm gonna be 0 for 15, but I'm shooting 15 more times because yo, that's what Kobe would have right. did. It's Mamba mentality. Like Kobe right. has put a name to it. Yo, and Van Fleet on the other side, like, be honest, his, his confidence, plus the fact that, yo, I've seen the boy go on TV and be like, yo, I'm an NBA champion. So, like, start a sentence by saying that. Like, you can't tell him nothing, man. Like, he just want to chip, too? No, but, Come Jim, on, I, I, I 100% agree with you that the answer to the Patrick Beverly thing, you have to at least say it's a little bit of both because because of the the, the antics and the stuff that he's done and how aggressive he plays – we probably do overrate him as a defender a little bit because if you would have asked me before this conversation came up, before I sat back and thought about it, like, wait, maybe he ain't that great of a defender. Before this conversation, I would have been, you'd have asked me my first team all defense, and I, I probably would have put Patrick Beverly at one of those guards. But then when you sit back and look at it, you're like, well, he gets a lot of attention, especially when he's guarding a big-name player. These big-name players be actually lighting his ass on fire, but he gets in their face so much and he has the antics that we kind of believe it. And, and and let me give him credit, though, in the same vein. Big name players have the green light to shoot over and over and over again. So even if you're making it difficult on them, that, that's all you can really ask out of an elite defender in the NBA, especially when he's going out oh, yeah. in the superstars. You're asking him 
to make life harder for them, make them inefficient. And he pretty much does that. And to it's Russell Westbrook's point, hold on, B, hold on, B. To, I'm going to give you this fact before you, because this might change a little bit of, of what you say. To Russell Westbrook's point about that game, you know advanced analytics are always out there, so you might say some stuff, and they're going to go back and they're going to fact check it. They said that Harden only shot the ball six times while um, Patrick Beverly was guarding him, and he was 0 for 6 in those shot attempts. Now, I don't know what else he did, if he was on him some other times and made him pass off or anything like that, but the advanced analytics says he actually did play Harden pretty well in a 47-point game. I don't know if you guys remember the argument that he and Westbrook had in the playoffs a couple years ago when Westbrook, when he was yeah. Everybody was talking to Patrick Beverly in the in the press conference about d and up Westbrook, and he was talking all cocky, and Westbrook was like, but I have 42 points, though. So you see that a lot, but he does make life harder yeah. for these dudes. So knowing yeah, that, yeah, he, he, he did force Harden to an 0 for 6. What's your thoughts? Is he an elite defender or not? No, I think, I think he is borderline elite. And, and to your point, there's a lot that kind of goes into what is elite as a defender in the NBA. These guys play at such a high level. Great offense is always going to beat great defense. Or <laughs> Lou Williams defense. probably throw gasoline on him in practice. Yeah, but, but, but here's the thing, though. And my thing is, think, my thing is think, this, though. I think, though. My thing, go ahead, be awesome. He, he, he's, he's, a, he's a very good defender. And I think that there was a time in his career when he played night in, night out. But he's a little bit of a super, not a superstar. But Patrick Beverly, because of his antics, has definitely turned himself into a star. I don't think he locks household. I don't think he locks up every night. I don't think he locks up every wing player. But I do believe that he knows defense is his calling card. He's never going to be a 20-point-per-game score. Hell, he might not ever be a 15-point-per-game score, particularly at this point in his career. So he's no, a guy. No, nor will he ever he, want to or be expected to. So, But yeah, it, it, he's, he's a guy, if, if he has to <laughs> lock up, he's going to take on that assignment. And it does become about efficiency. Man, think about it. You can be – an excellent defender, now you 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 you're not gonna stop a, a megastar who's allowed to shoot literally every time down, no matter what the shot clock and situation is. All you can do is point to efficiency, as you pointed out. So I think I I, I would have to agree with you. It's a little bit of both. I think he does live off his reputation, but I think when it is time to lace him up, strap him up, playoff type D. I think he can. I think he's above. He's he's way above average. I think that. I, I my opinion is this. I think that although my answer to your question was a little bit of both, because I think the thing about basketball and sports in general is you do have to sell whatever it is that you're a special a specialist at. But I think that he is an elite defender because he's playing. He's playing in a game, in which people don't defend. So. To me, defense is about effort. He gives effort, although some of it is like, you know, um, his, his putting on a show and entertainment show. That's what I was about to say, but how but much of that quote unquote effort. effort is just a show? You know how them dudes, you know, you know the dudes who used to play against them, I'm going to slap the floor and mm-hmm. grab my shorts and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, no, he does all that. He does all that, like, but that's part of that. the show. So, because mm-hmm. one thing we can't ever lose sight of when we talk about like this thing of ours and also football and other sports is that it's still entertainment at the end of the day. And he's made himself a name, as B. Austin said, by being an entertainer. But at the same time, he does give effort in a league where not too many people even give effort night in and night out. Like, I watch a lot of guys who are quote-unquote elite defenders not even try it sometimes. Like, and I get it, it's 82-game season, and everybody's not a, not a psychopath like a Kobe or a Mike. But – at the end of the day, when you think about some elite defenders or guys who were considered great defenders even in their time, like they all got torched by the best players. Because again, mm-hmm. like B. Austin said, great offense is always going to do that to you. Joe Dumas Ron. was considered a great defensive player. Michael called him a great defensive player and torched his ass every time that he guarded him. Like, um, Ron but he still was. A, he still. 
Listen, man. In the words of the in the words of the great Alonzo Morning, man. Long look, Mike knew I was there. You gotta know that they're there. So when you play Patrick Beverly, <laughs> you know I was you know there. That he's there. He knew I was you know, there. You know that he's Yo. there. You might give him Yo. forty, but you know that he's there. Yo. Ron Ron Artest is one of my all time favorites. I think he's a he would be considered a friend of the show and one of y'all favorites. Not necessarily for his prowess on the court. I consider dude one of the greatest athletic defenders that I've ever seen based on size, pound for pound. My man was like two sixty, six seven. You said you said Ron Artest? Ron Artest. Yo, I've seen Yo, what happened to Pete? I saw that man by his name. Jamal, I'm not even going to superstar. I saw Jamal Crawford, bro, piping hot chicken grease all over Ron Artest's body and have him dancing and hurting himself trying to defend. It happens to the best of them, to your, yeah. to your but he, point. But, he, so, but he's, a, he's a superstar offensive player, though. He's what they call a professional scorer. Yeah, yeah. He, he throws hot grease on a lot of people. So. Yeah, so... Yo, the whole term of throwing hot grease on somebody as a way to say somebody getting cooked is amazing, and I'm feeling it. But um, so I just let you know, be awesome. From now on, I'm not even saying the boy got cooked. Yo, he just threw hot grease on him, so that's as good as stolen. But anyway, yes, um, but 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 you're right though, man. Like think about these great defenders. Whether and, and it doesn't matter what position we talk about. Like great, like Hakeem Olajuwon was a great defender, defend defensive player at center, and I've seen Shaq like you know just yep. maul through him. It hurt, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart to see the imam get cooked like that. And while we're talking about it, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, greatest player to ever lace him up. We saw Mahmoud Abdul Rauf give him 32, and Mike yo, caught a I lot seen, of that. I, I remember one night. I remember one night Mitch got in his bag and started giving Mike that work. I mean, but yo, Mike was Mitch. there though. Mitch knew he was there though. Mitch yeah. was there though. That's, that's, I'm, talking about, I'm Mitch. talking about a young, a young Mitch Richmond when Mitch used to be a killer, but you really didn't see him because. He played in um, East, uh, West, shall I say, bubble off. Played in Siberia. <laughs> Mitch did <laughs> Mitch Mitch to a lot of people. Yo, Cass didn't even know how nice Mitch was because that was before, like, sports was 24-7, 365. Yo, like, if you listen, you listen, listen to Jimmy Williams, you work. if you listen to Jimmy Williams, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan called the league and had the league destroy them tapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably not found. Yo, Mitch used to give out work when everybody was asleep. All right, let's um real quick, um, stat of the week. And as Jimmy said when he gave me this his stat, um, go ahead and uh get ready, get fitted for that gold jacket because the stat of the week is about Lamar Jackson, who we spoke about a little bit earlier. And it's just a, a snapshot, some comparisons of Lamar Jackson and his first Career, his first 16 career starts. Um, in his first 16 career starts, Lamar Jackson has 13 wins. Patrick Mahomes had 12. Lamar Jackson has 1,258 rushing yards in his first 16 career starts. But Damian Tomlinson had 1,236. Uh, passer rating, Lamar Jackson, 94.4. Tom Brady in his first 16, 90.1. Yards per attempt, Lamar Jackson, 7.6. Aaron Rodgers in his first 16, 7.5. Completion percentage, Lamar Jackson, 63%. Drew Brees in his first 16, 61%. Um, So, you know, Lamar Jackson is easily impressing a lot of people and, dare I say, proving them wrong. I still think he's going to have to you know, be consistent with this over two seasons, maybe even a third, to get that universal no, respect to make everybody say, down. okay, okay, I was wrong. But no, yeah, the way he runs, though, like, Lamar, slide, dude. Get out of bounds. Yo, he's not going to be around. He's going to be dead in two years. He got to see know it's exciting to see them comparing your numbers to running that. backs, but you don't have to run like a running back. <laughs> Yo, I think I think the Ravens are like, look, let's just see if we can get a chip, and then because we know he's not going to be like in five years, so yeah. if we get I a chip, I think they're you know, evaluating quarterback differently now because <laughs> everybody is in agreement. Their typical quarterback has changed. 
now they're just going to be like, all right, we see if we can keep the dude for eight years rather than 13. You know, 14. and I know, I know a lot of times we romanticize about how things were when we were coming up and all that, but the, the game of football is changing just like the game of basketball is changing. And the game of football kind of has to change because you can't beat us the the pocket quarterback when you got defensive linemen who are six foot eight, four hundred pounds, running eight and the forty. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't just drop back in the pocket and, and yeah, look. Yeah, maybe running the maybe running you know the three eight the defensive part. Yo, they want a three eight, yo, and they like they in like the six foot eight and like four hundred pounds. <laughs> like you gotta you gotta get east. Like it's, yeah, it's no yeah. choice at this point. Y'all y'all realize the average line, NFL linebacker this day is faster than Jerry Rice. Damn. And that's what I'm saying. Yo, that's crazy. That's absolutely nuts. That's, that's crazy because we, yeah. we say that and everybody talks about Jerry Rice's 40 speed. But Jerry Rice is one of them dudes. Once he got the ball on that slant and got on the sideline, you weren't going to catch him. Yeah, he never get man. caught. Man, I'm about so, that. You weren't going to catch Rice, him. Now you got linebackers. Jerry Rice used with. to take – yo, listen. Once he <laughs> caught that slant, he was heading to the end zone like it was some Popeye's chicken waiting for him. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was heading oh. to that bucket. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, that's why you, you know what I mean. In his face, man. Right when I just said that, y'all crack. Man, y'all crack. Crack. And Joe, I can't even look at dude the same, yo. That hurts. Oh, man. no, we don't. I, we I, don't. When I look at him, I'm having disgusted face. But just when I said that, running towards that bucket, I realized at that very moment that Popeyes <laughs> don't have buckets. <laughs> KFC got buckets. Popeyes never had buckets, did they? That was a they KFC. They never got a bucket. They give you a, a big ass box. box. Yeah, yeah. All right. Greasy ass fact. Pop. Weird facts. Everybody else out there probably like duh, but y'all probably eat at Popeyes every other day. But um <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that until just now. Like, wait, I ain't you never get, seen you getting that Popeyes this weekend. You getting that Popeyes this weekend and sit back and watch that Disney Plus though. Oh, I I worked I worked out all weekend so I can get Popeyes all week so I can get Popeyes this weekend. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's home. I might get some pieces of chicken to go with it. <laughs> Yo. I'm to, yeah, I'm about to smash something. Um, all right, so yeah, that is your quote of the week. Get the gold jacket fitted because my man Lamar is on his way. Um, Jim, what 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 happened while everybody was on the grind? I guess we got to go through this yes, quick. Sir. I just want to get to. Yeah, you already comment. know, man. All right, bottom line with why you are on the grind is brought to you by Sports the Book, the greatest sports book ever written. Let me go cop that sportsthebook.com or warmsports.com, or you could buy it right from the uh, Warm Sports mobile app, by the way. Anyway, um, that being said, man, a couple of things happen while we want to grind this week, man. Um, Memphis, you know, their uh, James Wiseman was declared ineligible and with and withdraws his NCAA lawsuit. Um, and I think that everybody's out to get Penny. That's just my thing because Penny is upsetting the status quo, so now they're coming after this player. Although Penny probably did cheat, but that's either here nor there. I, I was um, sitting here for a minute, Jim. That was my question. I'm like, so why – I mean, I understand why he's in trouble, but I'm like, why is Penny not in trouble? But when Penny gave his mom the dough, it was like eleven and a half, you know, thousand dollars um, $1,000, Penny wasn't a coach at that time. He was just – he was considered to be a Memphis booster because he had already given a million-dollar donation to the school. But at the same time, when she when he moved them to town, he played for Penny's, you know, AAU team. I think he might have played at the high school he was coaching too. I don't. I'm not sure about that detail, because um, they said this whole thing might even have their state title in jeopardy. So yeah, it's, it's a serious situation, and they're withdrawing the long term. They're just going to sit it out and and try to get reinstated. Yo. Yeah. It's so trash. I don't even pretend to understand how it works, but what happens if you come from a wealthy family? Can you not take money from your family? I think family might be different, but you remember that time Richard Jefferson got in trouble because uh, Bill Walton invited him and Luke to a NBA oh, yeah, game or something yeah, like that? Was, and they questioned yeah, that. Him and Luke was like best friends. Yeah. I'm like, damn, but they yeah, are. Yeah, him and Luke was best friends. Yeah, him, right. yeah they drawn. Right. Him and Luke was best friends, and he was like, yo, that's my son. I'm bringing him to a game. Like, you got to yeah, bring his homie. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yo, that's it's, crazy, it's, man. Yo, I don't even understand. I mean, there's a difference. Because I, I don't know if you saw that, that highlight I sent you the other day, because I was laughing at it. So, 
um, Jay Z has a nephew that plays for the University of Washington, <laughs> and he like made the Sports like, Center top he, ten the other day. Nobody knows his name. Jay Z's nephew. Yeah, he made this. His name is something Carter, but he made the Sports Center top ten the other day because he had this crazy dunk. But when they like showed his highlight, it was like nephew of Jay Z. They didn't even say the boy's name. Nephew of Jay Z. Oh, like, his, like, his name is Jay Z. Nephew Carter. Um, <laughs> yo, yo. Well, no, but that, Jim, I know like, you. You were a big fan of, of blue chips. Like Penny was really living yeah. out some Butch McCray stuff right here, though. He gave dude mom almost twelve grand to relocate. Remember in the movie, Penny's mom yeah. asked for money for yeah, she asked for a crib. So Penny was drunk. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. He definitely we'll was talk drunk. About it in he definitely was drunk. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get to that, man. But anyway, man, I, I hope Penny continues his mission of um of setting the status quo. And I think it's dope to see guys like uh, Jawan Howard and Penny, guys we grew up watching, take over these um, you know, schools and you know be mentors yeah. to these young men. Anyway, um, Kawhi's new shoe got dropped today. Salute to Kawhi for dropping. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so, uh, what it do, baby? Ones. Uh, <laughs> the old head ones. The different colorway. <laughs> what it do, baby? I like I actually like them Johns, and I ain't gonna hold you. I was going to buy it, but I just don't, I can't I see myself too. paying a buck forty for those sneaks because. I'm cheap when it comes to that kind of stuff. But um, so is definitely a lot for these routes. But me, the only chance I have of getting back in shape is getting on the basketball court. And with plantar fasciitis, there's only a few brands that I could wear. New Balance, Asics, stuff like that to be comfortable. So I've been waiting for one of those brands to make hoop shoes. So I guess I got to get, get some Kawhi's. And, and go out there like yo man. But I'm wondering, do will the youngsters accept me? I mean, there's there's a case you can make for it because Kawhi is in the argument of best player in the NBA. But will this like me showing up in a pair of hoop New Balances in the gym? Would that be the same as like when we used to be at the playground back in the day and old head came in there with Converse and finger rolled us to death? Like is that? Yeah. A, yo, I don't, think, I don't think so. The reason, I, the reason I say that is because and they start better than because the thing about the. Yo, these young boys, you these young boys is different, man. These young boys is you different. They'll, they'll try it because of yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't and, even want to be accepted like, by, this, by this generation because they on the court wearing women's clothing. Like, they wear John Stockton you know, high guys, shorts. They, they navigated yeah. to a Seth, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that I think you're good with that, man. Yo, I've given up on, like, getting in shape with basketball. So, I actually um got a Peloton now. So, shout out to all my um people out there on the Peloton, like Rob Moreland. I know he listens to the show. Me and Jimmy went, to a, time, so we went to a high school basketball showcase where they were actually there to get recruited by, you know, small colleges. And everybody was rocking Under Armour. And that was before Steph had, you know what I mean? Before Steph. No, was, no, that was actually when Steph, had, that, that, that's when Steph at first, like, you know, came up. That's okay. why he was like, yo. Because remember, did he, we, did he remember the joke he was making? Like, Steph, they, they all had, like, yeah, different Yeah, yeah, we, we were Armour. joking. If you remember the joke just, at the time, we was like, yo, Steph ruined this. Because everybody wearing New Balance, I mean, everybody wearing um, Under Armour and everybody with two threes from half court. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so they was all trying to be like Steph. Like, that's how Steph ruined the game in his own way. Like, Kobe ruined the game, Mike ruined the game, and Steph ruined the game. Like, guys <laughs> like Shaq can't ruin the game because yeah. everybody not Steph. You're going like, to act, act like AI didn't ruin the game and have everybody carry him? Come on, man. Yeah. Yo, AI, had everybody, everybody had, AI had everybody carrying and not care whether they made the shot or not. But, yo, but everybody ruined the game. But y'all man Trey Young about to just get basketball shut down. Because yo, if Trae I see Young go shooting from where he's shooting from, I'm going to run on the court and steal somebody's kid. Yo, 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 yo we fight. can't coach. Yo, we he can't coach. Can we can't coach. Yo, but yo there's no way I'm not young, stealing boy, my high yo. school player that's if he shoot from there. I'm stealing it. Yo, yo get your dumb mess in the inside the three-point line. Because I was watching Brooklyn play the other day, and Kyrie be doing that nonsense, too. Like, oh, you ain't going to guard me from my half court? No. Who's supposed to guard me? Oh, I'm pulling up then. Like, they all do that. Dame Lillard does it. Kyrie does it. Like, that's the – like, they was – Yeah, they Dame Lillard be what, wrong. Yeah, they changing what range is at this point. Like, you have to start guarding cats by, at the half court line. Like, that's just what it is. Um, But anyway, man, salute to Kawhi and his new sneaks, man. Um, Kentucky got upset last night by Evansville. Now Evansville has a that's right Evansville that's the college they were ranked like 1026. Damn damn damn. <laughs> Yo, but they, they <laughs> upset Kentucky. But what was what was so special about this? Evansville's head coach is Walter McCarty, who was a graduate of Kentucky, which is probably the only reason Evansville got that game so they could make a couple of hours. Right. And he right. went out there and coached them up. 
and actually Yo, beat Kentucky. Walter McCarty used to be one of my favorites, and he was a bum. Yo, yeah, Walter they, McCarty they paid, like he could fix a carburetor. <laughs> they paid uh, they paid Walt McCarty in Evansville ninety thousand dollars to come up in the Rupp Arena and embarrass them. They were the number one team in the nation and a twenty five point favorite going into the game. Um, took that L. Took that took that nice L. Okay, the, the, the good thing about this for Kentucky at least in basketball, none of this matters. In football, your season's over. College football, your season is done. Yeah. Unless you're <laughs> Alabama. But that's what they mean. <laughs> yeah, um, but if Alabama loses to Shippensburg State, like it, they're yeah, still they, they're done. They're gonna fall too much to be in that playoff. But this is the NCAA. They can still end up getting a one seed, and even if they don't, yeah, they're absolutely. gonna be in absolutely. sixty four. So yeah. But salute to Walter good. McCarty for coming back and, and, and getting that dub because you know now you know you know he's gonna do it. What most coaches do. He's probably out of there now. Off that one win, he's probably uh-huh. out of there to a better uh, opportunity. <laughs> he calling like he calling like NC State. <laughs> he calling somebody like he like yo. I'm out of um, <laughs> also, Steve Kerr, right? Here's the last thing we'll talk about what happened on the ground. Steve Kerr made a comment this week that got people talking. He said that he thinks that every youth basketball player should play soccer first. And he gave a lot of reasons why in terms of the footwork and everything that it teaches you. Um, and when you think about a lot of guys that have come through the league, like Hakeem Olajuwon, Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. Nash, yeah, they all, yeah. they, all, they, all, <laughs> they all have backgrounds in playing soccer. So, um, you know, I don't um, think it was anything like really profound about it, but it, it, people, no, I no, saw no. people, a lot of people online talking about it. It wasn't groundbreaking because everybody's said it and done it before him. It's even a part of my plan. Like, I'm even letting my kid walk around right now and tell people that soccer is his favorite sport when I'm just letting him do it because I'm trying to get his footwork right for basketball. Yo! Because um, <laughs> I run this house. Um, but, yeah, th- that's the crazy part, though, because Steve Kerr, his reasoning was, you know, he kept talking about, you know, the the dribbling – and the passing, and he, he noted people like Steve Nash. He was like, if you notice, they see the floor a little bit better because they come from that soccer background, <clears throat> and it has a lot of similarities to basketball, but you're on a bigger pit, you're on a bigger field, so you're, you know, you get to pass the ball and then run behind a defender. He was naming all that stuff, and I was like, man, I hadn't even thought about that. My whole thing was about footwork, but, hey, if it's going to help him with all that too, then I'm down, Steve. So, um. Good stuff. Like you said, Yo, nothing pro. I remember back in the day. For, for whatever reason. We don't have all these conversations. Said, I ain't going to say nothing. Yeah, I remember back in the day, they said that uh, baller, being a ballerina would help you as a football player. And I was like, mm-hmm. come on, cuz. And then your man, um, your man oh, Walter Payton, actually went ahead and did it. Herschel Walker, um, too. And, <laughs> yeah. And I ain't lying either. Y'all can Google. Y'all can go to YouTube, look up Walter Payton and Herschel Walker taking um, ball- ballet, becoming or practicing ballet, shall I say. Herschel um, Walker didn't do anything that wasn't just raw. Like he took ballet. He took ballet. Yeah. The only exercise that he did was push ups and sit ups. Like he didn't lift weights. Yeah, he did push ups, <laughs> sit ups, and ran. Like no, 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 yeah. nothing. Like nothing. He didn't needed anything else for push ups, sit ups, and, and like, ran. Like, that three was years ago, he was talking about he was in shape to play in the NFL now. Yo, three years ago he was fighting. He, three years ago he was fighting in the MMA. Yeah. Yo, damn! After after he said it, he went out at like forty nine or fifty and ran a four four forty two. I bet you he couldn't cut to the. Yeah, he, he the just rent. he just he just something different, man. He from Krypton, like he's something different. Yeah. Yeah. Like his ass couldn't yeah. stop on the he, he, Yo, never could. Anyway, man, that's what happened while you were on the grind, man. His Real quick, there, let's move forward so we can get out of here in a couple minutes. No doubt. And real quick, this date in sports history, man, November 14th, 1970, tragedy, man. A plane crash near Canova, West Virginia, claimed the lives of 75 people, including 37 members of the Marshall University football team and its coaching staff. Um, rest in power still to all of those people. Um, and real quick, man, you know, you know, check out the website when you get a chance. We're almost out of here for the night, worldroomsports.com. So we got one quick NBA topic, Jim, if you want to get us into that. NBA rap, real quick. Yes, sir. And for those who may not know, NBA rap is brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Bottom line is 
um, unless you got an OnlyFans site, you need an actual website for your business. And you can do that by going to Digital Extreme Technologies at digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. Get you a custom website for your business. That is unless you're in a business where you need an OnlyFans site and you keep that site. Other than that, call Digital Extreme Tech. Listen, real quick, because we got a couple minutes left. I just want to see where you gentlemen feel about one topic, and that's LeBron Raymond James of the Los Angeles Lakers, or should I say the Lakers of LeBron James, the way the media tells it these days. Um, <laughs> he says that the need for load management, Paul, starts at the AAU level because he's saying that by the time cats get to the league, they need to you know, get on a um, load management because they've been running rock so crazy. You know what I'm saying? For so long. First, I'm a first I was not managing my load as a teenager. Everybody got that load. Um, look, um, the the whole thing, man, I just think this whole thing, and I'm not saying he doesn't have a point. If you know about AAU culture, these kids can play like three games in a day sometimes. But I'm, I'm just like, you know, cry me a river. Like, and 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 I'm gonna start just talking about people like us, not the people that we came up with that actually made it way farther than us and actually made it to the NBA because we have you know several people from our neighborhoods that did that as well. But they you know they're complaining about this kind of stuff like, but we used to play basketball because we love to play basketball, which means you were playing five to ten games out on a hot ass day on the blacktop, which is unforgiving to your knees and ankles. And, you know what I'm saying, nobody was thinking about rest. Even the guys who had serious talent who were trying to make it to a certain level, like they wanted to play basketball as much as they could. So even if that AAU culture wasn't around, and I'm not going to say, you know what I mean, we had summer leagues and people played in different summer leagues. So you might have two, three games in a day, but it might not be as structured as an AAU where you're sitting in the same place playing three games in a day. But, but, yo, man, you play in the elements, on hard concrete, and, and people just did it because they enjoyed doing it. So, like, all of this, people need to rest. I mean, we already saw that specializing could be something that's, you know, bringing forth injuries with these kids. But I just think everybody's just crying now, and I don't want to be that well, back in my day type of guy. But... It's just it's just getting real different because but you it seems are. like everybody yeah, has an. I know, but because it seems like everybody has thing. an excuse for something, and I'm not saying there weren't soft the people though. back in our day because there were, but just people no, weren't thinking about. Think oh, I don't want to play as too as much. Time goes on. I think that as time goes on and we get more information and more data points, that we recognize that. I think you're right that we did that, but I just don't know whether that was the right thing. I think that there are probably a lot of people who probably would have had longer careers or better careers if they wouldn't have been playing on rough service no. and doing all those things. Yeah, don't get me wrong. So, I totally so, think it was the wrong thing, but they're using it as an excuse like, well, so we won't load manage in the league. We need to load manage back then. Like, all right, but these dudes are playing in plush gyms and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. I, it just sounds like excuses. Yeah, so for me, for me, I look at it different. And maybe I look at it different. Get off my lawn. Like, you know, not, not – I'm not an analytics guy, but at the same time, I understand, like, I understand data science. And the thing about data science is the reason you have the gyms the way they are, the reason the sneaks are engineered the way they are, is because of more data. It shows that having right. this means that. It's, it's so a, that's so my really question. Like, like, how much I, more pampering I, I do they need? Oh, listen, man. Part of the world is, as, as time goes on, is to keep pampering and keep pampering until we get the robots to take over and we never have to leave the house. Yeah. That's what we're that's going to do. Uh, in the future, there's not going to be no Pamper too much. Yo, 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 free case, man. No disrespect to Young King. Listen, man, it's going to get to the point. It's going to be like that uh, that Bruce Willis movie where he just sent his, uh, his surrogate out in the world to handle his life. That's what we're moving towards, man. The robots will take over, man. It's here. Go out there, we go out there and make man. the league for me. Go out there and get in the league. Yo, it's going to be robots. It's going to be robots running ball, man. Like, yo, that's what it is. So, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you know, manage these balls. Pause. I'm out of here, yo. Listen, this ain't over. Brothers and sisters for joining us for another briefing in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, all over the internet, to everybody hollering at us. We definitely appreciate the support as always. Um, special thanks to those holding down the chat room. You already know who you are, y'all family. And listen, man, special thanks to Gus, Fred, and Tobias for ducking his smoke. Tune in next week. 
live right here on demand as we can as we review NFL week yo know, week eleven already. Come on, cuz and preview week twelve and catch you up on everything happening around the world of sports. So until then, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the start of next week. We'll see you right back here next time. Catch everything we do, all of our content. Everything can be found at the hub, which is warmandsports.com. You can get my book there, which is Sports the Book, or you can go to sportsthebook.com. But like I said, it's at the hub of warmandsports.com. But until next time, everybody, do not accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. Good luck, or not. Know the blueprint. Yo. Every Thursday, six to eight, they do this. <sighs> Shout out to Dez, PJ, Be Austin, Doc Bay on replay. Uh. WarRoomSports.com. Get that mobile app. If not dial, call it 323 They be going and you sensitive, then oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, the tough sports. Uh. Showtime like magic in the block push. Magic looking alive. Push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop dollars, pit stop and knowledge. Uh. Should be in sports credit as I ain't talking college. E. Five guys, no beef though. Corporate secret, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a chief flow. KC, royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours, get your game up. Who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. War Room Sports. Yeah, you know? Jimmy, Dev, DJ, Doc Bang. War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.